Hi there. Now for this question, we're told that the machine settings are adjusted so that the weight in grams of beans in a tin is normally distributed with mean 205 and standard deviation sigma. And given that 98% of the tins contain between 200 grams and 210 grams, find the value of sigma for four marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment to pause the video and when you come back you might want to fast forward to the end just to get the answer or take your time and see how I worked it out. Okay then welcome back if you had a go. So first of all what I'd want to do here is to set up a random variable and we've got a new mean here, 205, to what we had in the earlier questions. So for this, I don't want to use the same random variable. I want to have a different one. So what I'll say is we'll have y this time. Let y be the random variable, okay, RV for short, as usual. And it will stand for the weight of the beans, okay, in grams, okay, weight in grams. And we'll better say where the random variable y is distributed then normally with a mean of 205 and the variance is the standard deviation sigma squared. I'd also want to draw out two diagrams for the normal distribution for the random variable y and directly below it the standardized normal distribution. We'll mark in the mean now, which is 205. Now for this question here, we've got 98% then of tins contain between 200 grams and 210 grams. Now 200 grams then is clearly going to be to the left of the 205, so we'll just mark that in there as 200. Now notice that this is five units below the mean. And if we add five units to 205, we get 210, what we have up here. So there's a symmetry about this problem here. Okay, so we'll mark that in as 210. So we're told that in this region in here, let's just shade it, there's 98%. So this area then is 0.98. 9, 8. The probability then of getting something between 200 and 210 grams, 0.98. Now whenever I draw up a diagram like this on the top here, I always project down my values onto the standardized graph, okay? So I'm just going to take the value 210 because it's on the right of the mean and the tables tend to work off the values on the right of the mean. So the Z value that we've got down here, let's just say we call it Z1. And remember that any Z value here is always equal to the observed value, which in the formula is normally x, but we're dealing with y's now. So we'll just put y minus the mean, mu, divided by the standard deviation sigma. And when we use tables, we're concerned with the probability then generally to the left of our z value. So what would this area to the left of z1 be? Well, if I go back up to the top graph here, because of the symmetry of this, I know that if this is 98%, then these two regions here outside must be another 2%. So each one must be 1%, okay? Or it has a probability of 0.01. So if that's the case, if that's 1%, then the area back from Z1 must be 98% plus another 1% here, 99%. So if we just shade this area in, then this is 0.99, the equivalent of 99%. So next I want to work out what Z1 would be. 
z1 would be equal to the observed value, which is 210, minus the mean, which is 205, and we divide this by the standard deviation sigma. So if we just come down here, what we now need to do is get the value of z1. And we can do this from tables. So we'll just put it up here from tables. And we can get Z1 from two different types of tables. The best one to use in this particular example is the inverse normal table, which got an extract up here, which gives us the Z value when we exceed it with a probability of P. And I can see that from here, this probability here is 0.01. That would correspond with this one in here. So if I select this value here, P is 0.01. Let's just circle that there, OK? Then you can see that from tables, Z1 must be equal to 2.3263. 2.3263. And I can substitute this value into our equation here, rearrange it for sigma. The other way of getting our value for Z1, not that it's going to be as accurate, but it's still possible to use it, is by using the commutative normal distribution tables. And from this one, it gives us the Z value when we know the area to the left of it, the probability of being less than it. And we do know that it's 0.99. So we'd look up in this column here, 0.99. Remember, this is just an extract from the table, so you'll have to check out your one. So which one of these two values is the closest to 0.99? Well, I'm going to select this one here, 2.32. And so, therefore, I could have Z1 as just simply 2.32 if I use this value here. Either way, it doesn't matter. The examiners do tend to give some margin of error, depending on which value you took. So, if I substitute our value then of 2.3263 into here, what we've got is therefore 210 minus 205 divided then by sigma equals 2.3263. And rearranging this, well, we've got 5 on the top here. And if I multiply both sides by sigma, you've got 2.3263 sigma. And now if I divide both sides by 2.3263, I get sigma as being 5 divided by 2.3263. And that gives me a value for sigma, which is 2.1493, and so on. And if we round this to, say, three significant figures, then sigma is going to be 2.1523 SF. Three significant figures then for short. So I hope that's been of some use to you if you found this one tricky. All right.